Hello everyone and greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and I'm here with Nancy. And today we're looking at the biggest miracle performed by Prophet Muhammad. Whoa. May peace be upon him. So guys, if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get down to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we are going to learn from it. The biggest miracle performed by Prophet Muhammad. Let's check it out. A single ordinary man and the profound message he proclaimed would change the world forever. His name was Muhammad. In a cave above Mecca, Muhammad had an experience that would be the defining moment of his life. An angel was said to appear before him in the form of a man, instructing him to recite in the name of God the Almighty. For Muhammad, it was an encounter as profound as it was deeply disturbing. And that is the beginning of the prophetic career of Muhammad. The months to come would bring more revolutions. Powerful words of a lyrical quality, more beautiful than the most exquisite Arabic poetry. Above all, Muhammad was to bear one message to his people, a simple yet radical proclamation, that there is only one God. The implications were staggering. One God meant one people. No more tribal divisions. To the poor and unprotected, the prospect was revolutionary. Muhammad's following began to grow. They called themselves Muslims, for those who surrender to God. They set out to preserve the message Muhammad had brought. This was the beginning of the Quran. The Quran is a revelation of spiritual teaching, of both ethical and social guidance. It was revealed and remains in Arabic. With words alone, the Quran delivers its vision to the faithful. Its imagery conjures a picture of the afterlife that resonates with all the power of traditional Bedouin poetry. As Muhammad's community grew, so did the opposition. The tribal leaders decided Muhammad and his message must be removed permanently. They demanded that Muhammad's uncle remove his clan's protection from the Prophet, which would clear the way for his murder without the threat of retribution. But his uncle refused. The battle lines were drawn. Nothing short of tribal war would settle the conflict now. Muhammad's followers were forced from the marketplace and starved. Those without clan protection were tortured and killed. In 619 AD, Muhammad's wife Khadija died, and his uncle as well. Gone were his first great love and his only protector. Here at last was the opportunity his enemies had been waiting for. But in the lush oasis town of Yathrib, north of Mecca, 
a refuge opened to Muhammad and his people. Clan rivalries had become deadly in the town, and they desperately needed a peacemaker. Muhammad agreed to travel to Yathrib and settle their disputes in exchange for a safe refuge for his people. For Muhammad's followers, leaving the place of their ancestors, their families and tribes was the ultimate test of devotion. In doing so, they began a new community, a new tribe. For the first time, they were bound together not by blood, but by faith. In the course of a single caravan journey, Islam marks its true beginnings. Their journey is known as the Hijra. 622 in the Christian calendar marks the Muslim year one. Muhammad's goal among the people of Yathrib was the same as his larger mission, to bring unity and peace with his message. He was asked to be a Solomonic figure, to mediate tensions between tribes that seemed intractable. As his work succeeded, the town would become known as the City of the Prophet, Medina. Muhammad's great task in Medina was to try and bring together these various groups and to try and forge a, a community of believers in a way that would uh, bring people together in a sort of harmony. To the divided clans of Medina, Muhammad offered a vision of solidarity. But even as he spread the word of Islam, he didn't challenge the beliefs of other faiths. As the Muslim community grew in Medina, a life of simple devotion and ritual developed. It's said that while he was in Medina, Muhammad received a revelation, instructing those in prayer to face in the direction of the Kaaba in Mecca. Though filled with pagan idols, it was still the shrine of Abraham, the first believer in the one true God. But even as the Muslims were praying toward Mecca, their enemies there were rallying in force. Their goal, to wipe out the Muslims. Muhammad's people began to gather arms. Though the Muslims prepared as best they could, they were outnumbered and outmatched. They mustered a force of only 313, mostly old men and boys, with few weapons. While the approaching Meccans were heavily armed and a thousand strong. For years, Muhammad had tried to bring Islam to the people of Mecca peacefully. Now, it was time to fight. The Muslims faced their own tribes. Brother fighting brother. Son against father. When Muhammad came into Mecca, and not only did not carry out a bloody revenge, but actually embraced the very Meccans who had fought him for three years and attempted to annihilate him, it was very shocking to uh, the people in his milieu. So um, within the very founding of the religion, one finds episodes of great generosity, um, uh, often extraordinary acts of, of kindness and mercy. But not all of Mecca escaped Muhammad's wrath. Flush with victory, his troops marched straight to the Kaaba. Seven times they circled the shrine, a 
as those who had come to seek its protection appealed to their idols. But it was not the pagan people Muhammad had come to destroy. It was their gods. He raised his staff, and the tribal gods of his ancestors smashed into dust. When Muhammad entered Mecca and entered the shrine and destroyed the idols, this is a great cultural and symbolic importance in Islam. By breaking the idols, he was breaking apart the tribal system in which each tribe really had its own independent deity. This was shocking to the Bethlehem. This was saying the gods of our fathers are being destroyed. In some sense, you're saying that our fathers themselves were deluded. How can you say this in a tradition in which relationships to one's father and tribe are primary? So this act of iconoclasm then um, is seen um, as, a, as an act of uh, prophetic violence that has just as much importance in Islamic tradition as uh, Moses' breaking of the tablets when he saw the idolatry at Mount Sinai or Jesus' uh, casting money sellers out of the temple. The destruction of the idols was a new beginning, a breaking from the past and the creation of a powerful new force. Mecca was just the beginning. One after another, the tribes of a nation were summoned to the fold and united under the banner of Islam. A worldwide community of faith was begun, born in an extraordinary alignment of history, personality and conviction. What Muhammad did was to bring a sense of solidarity, a sense of mission, and he united all these separate segments within the peninsula from then on moved eastward, westward, northward, southward. The Muslims turned to the north, swept into present-day Lebanon and Syria. continued west into Egypt and quickly across North Africa, fortifying the coastline of the Mediterranean. Only the seas stopped them. Its growth was so explosive uh, from uh, 622, the year one of the Islamic calendar. Um, within 50 years, people whose father had had been camel herders, were now governing one of the major empires in world history. Within 200 years, it extended from Spain to China. The Muslims had absorbed the Sasanian Empire of Iran and two-thirds of the Christian Byzantine Empire. By now, the empire was larger than Rome. It stretched from Morocco in the west to the Indus River in the east, where the border of India is today. How had it happened that so small an army could conquer an area so large, so fast, so easily? Islam's success in expanding into the Central Middle East and across North Africa was due in, in large part because people were fed up with previous regimes. But the idea that Muslims were going across the world saying convert or die is, is really not not at all. But it didn't have a heavy hand. They didn't rule with a heavy hand. They, they allowed the, the conquered peoples to maintain their, their administrative uh, structures. They allowed the Christians and the Jews to maintain their religious law and to be governed by them. And so, in many cases, the uh, conquered peoples did not feel the presence of the, the new regime very heavily. 
certainly for individuals who felt themselves uh, exploited or downtrodden by an oppressive and even sometimes parasitic priesthood, the idea of Islam being a religion essentially free from clergy must have seemed very attractive. It's the times that creates the movement and sometimes the men. The Roman Empire had collapsed, the Byzantine Empire wasn't strong enough. There was a need for a new vision, a new uh, way of looking into life. And I think what happened at that time, Mohammed's mission, filled the void that uh, the societies wanted. They really wanted some sort of solidarity in their lives. Islam has come to stay. In just a hundred years, Muhammad's vision had transformed the spiritual and political map of the world. And his followers had established an empire larger than Rome. But Muhammad never lived to see it. In the 11th year of the Islamic calendar, 632 AD, only two years after the taking of Mecca, Muhammad died. Oh, that's a very um, interesting um, video, looking at um, the miracles performed by Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Just like how the angels appeared to him and then he said to him, read, and he says that what he cannot read. You know, from there he was able to teach him how to recite, and that is when he was able to recite the Quran, being, in a sense, one of the holiest books that the Muslims are using for their teachings, performing their government, and everything. Now, we look at um, Prophet um, Muhammad, and then you got to realize that just like we learned in the other video, that when God sent a prophet, a messenger to its people, for those who accept are always safe, and then the rest who do not accept are always destroyed. We have learned this in a couple of our videos. You got to realize that he was born in way in Mecca, right? But due to what that was happening, he has to leave Mecca and went to Medina. That is back, you understand, he has to went back. But this time around, like I, like we learned in the in recitation story of Noah, right? You got to realize that Noah's son did not accept what his father was actually telling him. And then when he was saying that God is going to destroy the earth, right? And then he says to his father that he's going to take refuge in the mountains. Not knowing that God in his own way have knew about the mountains of God. God created everything. And at the end of the day, what happened when the waters come out? God destroyed the whole earth. Right? And that's how the son died. And then when Noah, when Noah was talking to God, he was like, oh. And then God told him that well, he was not his son. Despite the fact that he was actually his biological son. Right? This is the same thing that happens to the people of Mecca. Despite the fact that this is where Prophet Muhammad was in a stand born. But what happened when he was coming back? He came with a war, he came with the fight. But then not that because he wanted to destroy them, but what his main purpose was to destroy the gods in which they are serving because they were pagans. They were just serving in a sense, making images, worshipping images, right? But Prophet Muhammad actually came in a sense with a message. And then since they could not accept the message, then what happened to them? You see how God does these things. So despite the fact that some of them we are of same family and then what happened? And then you see them in a sense, that's when they started in a sense fighting one another. But then at the end of the day, that comes to a consensus in which that what the Islam was what established and then from the Islam what begins to grow. So it means that from all these things in a sense to happen, some things are things to happen before some of these things in a sense will come to pass. And then all these things in a sense happen and then for you to see how the Islam starts spreading, not from the Mecca and then the Medina in which it means that they actually established itself according to the view of towards the city of the Prophet. You see how the thing got spread in a sense to the north, to the west, you see in a sense everywhere to be the Syrian, the Jeep, you understand, and the rest of it, you understand, the rest of the rest of they are all Islam. Right here, that's how in a sense this is a miracle because this is something that started in a sense a little and look at how in a sense it has actually grown to the even being the second largest in a sense 
religion in a sense in the world. It's very in a sense interesting one. But then if you look at it in the video they got to realize that after he has done or finished in a sense doing what he is supposed to do, what God has sent him to come and do, and then he died. That was in two years. After he took over in Medina. Sorry, after he took over um, Mecca, right? And it all happened two years later, and then he died. A very interesting video, a very hard touching one, and very indicative because this video is actually exposing us to some of the things that we didn't know. Though, um, in my comment section, I saw people are actually opting that they want to buy a Quran for me so that at least I can be able to like let me know I'm still looking forward to it though but it shows that there are a lot of information that are actually in the Quran that we need to learn whether you learn to become a Muslim or not but it is better for you to know the truth and at the end of the day to make your own um, decisions but then let's hear from um, Nancy Grace the miracle of Prophet Muhammad. Of course, the miracle they are actually a lot. You know, I just heard from you. So <laughs> let's hear from you, Nancy Grace. This indeed this is an interesting video, yeah. and I have learned a lot, and the video has said a lot, and I just love the fact how God uses his, the prophet to perform so many miracles. Yeah. So. I just love it, and my opinion to this, I just uh, to this video, that I just love the fact that the prophet willingly accept the grace of God upon his life, and he was willing to do the work which God has sent him to do. So this is just a lesson to us, and a, what we have to learn that we have to give ourselves. For God to use us, we are just a vessel, and God will definitely use us to fulfill His purpose. Indeed, there is a purpose God has called you and I on this earth. We can only fulfill that purpose. We can only be a blessing to this generation so that God will bless us and be pleased with us. Alright, so guys, this is the end of our video. If you like our reaction, you should like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any video you want us to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section. I'm gonna check it out, so guys. Amen. Bless.